Badoop. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello. I'm here too. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear you all right now. Say something again. Hello. Thank you a little bit. Uh. Yeah, can any can everybody hear everybody else? Can uh can you hear can you guys hear Zukin? Yeah, I might have to do a thing here, yeah. I'm just doing a little uh God. Now we know my audience to your audience. I get white banded up here being like, what the fuck is a Zookin? <laughs> get out of here. Alright. Should be good now. Just uh, switch back to my other set there. Yeah. Uh, Unchained, I heard. That's rough. It's a big day. And he really hates Mondays, I guess. Damn, that was a dark joke, but... Jesus. I, yeah, anyway. Rest in peace, dude. Did they have a... Like, how are they doing, like, Darth Vader voice stuff now? Do they have a... Was there another guy that's doing that? Already, or doing AI stuff or something? My guess is they're gonna do some crazy necromancy. They got his voice profile already and everything. Probably. Tommy Lee Jones will step in. Really? Can you do a uh, Darth Vader? Or is that just a... Hey, Waldo. I need to make my chat thing bigger here. He agreed to allow AI to do his voice. Vader in Obi Wan was already AI. Oh really? Yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know, man. Is something iconic as iconic as that, like kind of bigger than you? I guess if I was, I feel like if I was in a, if I was in his shoes, maybe I'd be like, yeah, keep Vader going. After I'm gone, kind of thing. He probably got a pretty big check for if he has, I don't know, his uh, if he has like family or whatever. As long as it's good quality and stuff, I guess. Because like it's it's kind of a specific voice too right like, yeah. like you couldn't really pull that off with like like say like uh when um uh what's his face damn batman passed away um the batman in my opinion kevin conroe yeah yeah there's like there's something so important about voices like it's like uh, in Splinter Cell, they swapped over from Michael Ironside to like a new actor who was also doing all the physical stuff. Um, like I just didn't buy the game. I, <laughs> it's like it's, this isn't Sam Fisher. This is some other guy. Whatever. This isn't Michael Ironside. And then turns out that the only reason he didn't do it was because he was battling cancer at the time. 
So, I mean, I think, I think he, he won, which is awesome. How's, uh, how's audio on my side? Uh, everybody, is it, is it good? And ban this dude. He already got him. Clear. Sounds good. A red blue thing. Matrix Hunter. Class and cool. Up in here too. Class and Cool posted a, a pic of him with that sort of perfection photoshopped into his hand. <laughs> Got me thinking that maybe we should, that would be something we hand out the file for people to 3D print or something. No? Dude, 100%. Holy. Think we would uh ever give out like like uh I don't know like the three D files for our uh for our races for people to print on? Maybe. I'm not against it. I don't know how how well that would work though. With like the actual models, is the way we built them. Hmm. There was a, I think it was a Japanese game. Um, I think the guy that worked on uh, Lost Odyssey, if I'm correct. Uh, they did a full project of just dioramas and that was like how they built out the world was they just built these like like these real life dioramas that they 3d scan it's interesting it looked pretty cool and it was like re-imported into the game and everything but i don't know how well that did i haven't heard much from it That, that dude's coming along. Are you gonna... So you're, you've got it in color right now. Are you just gonna... Put that in probably color? Grayscale. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna grayscale it, I think. So I was... I was telling you about the... I think I told you anyway about the experiment I was doing with that orc. And all that stuff. And with the... The color... Like the full color stuff or whatever. As a skin tone. Um, and it turns out, I guess we're still limited. Like the, the trouble I was having with it was the orc head is its own material ID. Yeah. And so I was able to get the, the body to load in like a, like a full color texture, copy layer, all that shit as like an actual skin option. So like skin option zero would be the grayscale and it would lurk normally and then Skin option two would be, or one or whatever, the next one up, 
would be just a full yeah. full color fully painted all that stuff and then um uh, on a copy layer um but the problem was the head wasn't loading in the same way um so it seems like if we want to do anything anything like that it has to all be on one sheet hmm I, honestly i don't i don't have any problem with it being on uh well, at least for for some of this being on what's it called the uh, on our larp system just because it like if it was a if it was a slightly different game or whatever or a different art style then like sure but our art style is like like we use a lot of local color and you know not insane amounts of like color variation and stuff like that so it actually kind of works in our benefit that we're not going too crazy with color variation except for like specific mobs yeah i think um um i'm we'll see how it goes i guess we're, we could do it with that that squidward guy um yeah, uh squidward. well actually no we can't because the head is on a separate thing um but if that was on one sheet then that would be a good candidate for that kind of thing so what we'll have to do, we can still do it in full color we'll just have to set it up like a not as a skin tone as more of like a just selecting the, the texture like a more basic yeah. mob or something which it, we'll still get the the point across we'll just any sort of outfits we have to do will have to be a specific texture option yeah 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 so we can still well, for them yeah they're they're not going to be wearing much so yeah and if they do they'll be very specific yeah so it'll still be fine i was just hoping to like crack that nut you know what i mean mm. So you can how's the heat up in california bottom california is melting yeah i got the ac running in the background right now i don't know if you hopefully you probably hear it a little bit but uh it's not too bad day up here anyway um sounds like it's worse down there right now supposedly it's supposed to cool down uh, after this week though there's this um you know that feeling when you're doing like textures and like like it just feels so much more like worth it to put the effort in when like your texture is mirrored do you get that it's like it's like i i do one side and like you don't have to dread doing the other side you're like oh man this this is like <laughs> uh like all my work is being doubled essentially i get that a lot but especially in this mob where usually with player characters you know it doesn't doesn't duo but for like the torso yeah i think that is that one all mirrored yeah yeah i think the his shawl but he has the shawl uh, that's probably not mirrored though Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think that is mirrored, yeah. I'm a little bit spoiled, though, because, like, 3D Coat just lets you mirror everything regardless. Even if it's not mirrored? Yeah. It's like a... It just mirrors down the the model itself, or you can actually put it exactly where you want it to. Like if you want to mirror, do an offset mirror or something like that, you can put it wherever you want. So I I don't it, I don't need the UVs to be mirrored for me to mirror stuff. Yeah. Like I like I'm I think just generally in 3D, like it's a very prevalent thing, right? So I'm I think I'm spoiled to the point of like almost being afraid when I don't have mirror on I'm like oh fuck I gotta go out on my own Just got like my 
floaties on with mirror with mirror on. Little training wheels. Man, that is that does sound good though. Hmm. Might give 3D coat another shake at some point. I think it would be worthwhile if you wanted to. If you even if you still spent like 90% of your time in Photoshop. Because like I, when I was watching you do the that merchant gear. And you were like just doing the outline and stuff in the, the thing, um, and it looked like it was, it was pretty complicated the way you were doing it. It's like you could just like, you know, you could just do that part in 3D coat and then kick it over to Photoshop, do all the normal stuff you do, and you know, the uh, uh, I feel like the first like section that I did was like smooth, but then. I moved on to something else. I don't. I don't remember what it was, and I just had one hell of a time. I was like, "This is not lining up the way that I want it to." Uh, no, and yeah. So maybe, maybe just even using it for like uh, painting in like the base or whatever could could help a lot. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know how expensive it is for just painting in the base and mirroring, I guess. Oh, also, um, some, something that I found out, uh, <laughs> so you know that, that little fuzziness that you see in a lot of my screenshots? Um, from if i take a screenshot from photoshop there's like a there's like a filter that photoshop puts on to the 3d model but the texture itself can be the perfectly perfect like crisp pixel you know so a lot of it is actually coming from uh the well i think a lot of it i you know there's still a little bit of fuzziness when i don't get like too into the detail but once I get into the detail, I feel like it's it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I, th I think like looking, I was looking at some of the stuff I've been doing on this guy even, and um, like some of the lines are fuzzy and shit too. Um, I think part of it is to, like dependent on the pixel density and all that stuff as well. Um, so there's a, there's a number of things. So like, I I don't know I don't know if it w it was like. You know, blame if it's fair to blame the Photoshop thing or not, but um, I don't know. It's hard to tell. I think at the end of the day, as long as the end result is as crisp as we can muster, it looks yeah. good. It's a, it's a fine balance as well, because, like, I don't know, in, in painting, usually, like, like, painting is, like, a combination of, like, soft edges and hard edges and different texture and all that. But, like, it feels like for 3D, the, the rule, you know, at least for us, is, like, no, it's got to be crisp, you know, because uh, it's that... Uh, the, the whole ultra HD like packs or whatever that people are, you know, putting on like EverQuest and, and older games and stuff like that. Meanwhile, I feel like EverQuest is like super blur blurry and people were like chill with it. Yeah. I don't know. I think, um, some of the stuff is blurry but at the same time like there's clarity in like what it is at, at times sometimes it's not like uh, 
I've always kind of looked at the the like the ghoul is a good example of like kind of a, a jumble of stuff and the the fresh one orc like outfit took me like you know I always kind of wondered what that material was like some of that shit's just unclear but there are other things that are, are more clear and maybe it's just more about the UVs that they 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 actually have a even lower resolution than we do to the point mm. where they're just like blasting like a cube from a, a certain angle and it gets like a really perfectly flat canvas and then, and then they just do like a really nice clear um and maybe not as much detail um texture the faces had a lot of detail though yeah That the faces had that clarity of the link that you're talking about. Yeah, definitely. Fasting Tool says he used some wild 4K pack. Uh, on P99. I think I installed something like that too. But they're all like, they're, they've all been like, those were all AI upscaled and stuff. So. I feel like I chose like the the uh, worst time to stream this guy, I'm, like hanging out by his knees and everything, and I did all the all the cool like gnarly face stuff already. Oh, part of the process. That's how you get the views, man. Try <laughs> to show off the wear wear rat knees. Yeah, I'm sure that's a <laughs> fetish somewhere. <laughs> like, oh man. Okay, I mean, not to take this stream in a in a hilariously. Have you guys heard of? Uh, I think it was Big Knee Lover. Oh, dude, I need to. I need to fucking show you guys. Man, <laughs> I can't. I can't even... <laughs> this is not good. Alright, I need to check to see just in case, like, if there's... Alright. Here we go. Uh... Oh, this is so weird. <laughs> Big knee lover <laughs> on TV and dark. What the fuck? <laughs> I can't. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's I was so... I was being facetious, it... but you really found it. Oh my god! Okay, I'm leaving. Oh holy shit! I can't believe that account's still up, dude. I fucking cannot believe it. Yeah, like how do you even like? What do you do about something like that? It's... It's not really sexually explicit. It's just really weird and makes everybody uncomfortable. I can't. Oh god, it's like a. There's something like hilarious about like old deviant art profiles. There's like, we're just like really fucking. Uh, what what is it called like? just hard to find like rare weird things on the internet like there's this guy on youtube i was looking for like a costco hot dog review i don't know why i don't know why i was looking for a costco hot dog review but i found this guy that dedicated his channel to just eating food incorrectly like like just so wrong in every way like he took a like a burger and like ate it like one layer at a time 
like the top bun, then the pickle, then the cheese. I was like, what am I fucking watching? This is some weird, like, fetish shit. But That's what like, is going on? It sounds more like rage bait, but yeah. Yeah, I, I think it was, to be honest. But it was like, uh, like, like if the, if, I, if this is like the, the Costco hot dog, you like took a bite like that. Just in the middle? Yeah, and then just like like ate through it, kind of like a corn on the cob. I w it was just so weird. And it's a weird place. And it is a weird place. <laughs> Showing them gaming. Reminds me of when I w was a kid, I would peel the skin off the chicken nugs, eat it, then dip the skinless chicken nuggets into the sauce. That doesn't sound too... too wild, though. Like, I don't know. That's, uh, that's Eric Cartman eating, eating all the skin off the KFC. Anyway, Jesus Christ, sorry for bringing that up, but one thing leads to another. Get back on track, jeez. Those look like uh, they are sticking out now, the scales. Yeah, so I kind of went through and I painted like just a kind of a, a light side and a dark side, very flat. And now what I'm doing is I'm going back through. Um, I have a I have this gradient map as well I built for for the red, um, and I'm I'm going through to adding some more shadow like highlights and shadows on on all of them to like make them more 3D and try and get like try and capture some of the the form of the overall guy. So you can see right here um, on the shoulder I tried to capture a little bit more highlight and then it kind of swoops into like a little bit of a shadow. Um, underneath that muscle in an attempt to try and get kind of a shoulder to it. Um, and same on the thighs and all that thing. Top of the back, really side good. of the back, all that sort of thing. Um, but you can see the difference here. Like, if we, if we look, all that I have left is the, the tail here, but you can see how flat these guys are versus, like, just these ones next to it. So... It's coming along. I, I think he's coming along pretty well. Uh, it's just a lot, of, a lot of time, but I think it's, it's come. It's, it's at least feels like it's worth it. You know, um, I need to do a whole thing with the head as well to, uh, match okay. the rest of the stuff. Okay. So for like in the future though, please tell me you're going to like, just if there's like a dragon or something, you're going to like, take the shoulder and be like, yeah, I'm just going to copy this section out, paste it in. Hopefully it works out a little bit, do some, uh, finagling or whatever with the, with Photoshop's like transform. Well, you know, the, the method that Zach kind of got me into that I started using on this one as well, that is probably a better way to do it is to have just a couple scales individually that I can slot in. Um, mm. so like have them all pre-rendered individually, you know, and then slot them in one by one in Photoshop or something. And then, um, it, what you do is like, I think, I think the op optimal method might be, um, you know, do, do like some grid lines to kind of figure out the flow of everything and then place in the scales individually. And then you'll have like all of them laid out and all rendered already. And yeah. then, and then you just do touch-ups from there. That would, that I can would, see that. That yeah. would have been... I wish I had thought about that or, or whatever, you know, from the start, because that would have probably sped up this whole thing. Um, I need... I think someone's at the door. I need to check in there real quick. Yes. I'm in control of Zuken stream at the moment now. Unless he muted me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Whoa, it's my favorite Eminem streamer. You mean Zookin, right, Senior Angus? That, was that the joke? Because we're dual streaming? Very funny. Very funny, Senior Angus. Calves look pretty good. Jesus, that's messed up. Showing them what the fuck. Is uh, is the multi-stream thing pinned for everybody? By the way, I just want to double check, make sure it's all pinned. is do I want this hair to go all the way down or do I don't, I don't quite know what the best call is here let's just get everything else figured out But yeah, the um, Evan actually shown much of it, uh, but the wear rat has gotten a facelift. which are these guys and we're gonna have rat men as well that's gonna be good they are different Yeah, well, I spent some time on it to get rid of it, but if I can just chill out, guys. There, fixed it. Will the wear rat transform so you may think it's a normal rat first? Oh well, shit. I never thought of that. I was only always under the impression that it would be like a human that turns into a rat, but maybe there is like a situation where a bunch of rats just turn into were-rats at like night or 
or something. Can you, fucking Jesus Christ, Senior Angus, I'm sorry. That's just, I can't. I can't. I can't let you do that. Out of here. stream too. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Oh, that is so funny. I, I have too much fun with medium, low to medium amounts of power. Do not trust me. Yo, moon phases. That's kind of cool. Like, maybe, like, you literally just did the meme, like, why not both? That's cool as fuck. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. All right. I may bring that up. I'm back. Sorry, I had to enforce my iron... Uh, law onto uh, Senior Angus. Oh, Snap, you deleted him from my chat? That's... You're going after him in <laughs> other people's streams now? Is <laughs> 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 no place safe? <laughs> well, well, he came to you to be like, please, please get me unbanned from Goblin's chat. Yeah, he did deserve it. Hey. I was like, you think you can go... He's, he's over here stream? looking for asylum, and you're just like, <laughs> nah. Crossing borders. Yeah. Poor guy. Uh, he'll serve his sentence. But yeah, so uh, I got the I got this. The only thing, the only thing that kind of stinks is um, the gradient map doesn't transfer to 3D coat. So what I have to do is um, basically save out a new, like a copy layer of it, and mm. kind of look at it because, like, you can you can look at it and paint in it. In Photoshop, but like, I don't know. I I like to see it on the model to like really get an idea of like how it's looking, especially when stuff's like mirrored and things. So, a little bit of it. I mean, it's just a teeny work work around and it works. It would be would be great. I don't know why they don't have the ability to do grading maps in this. And uh. Send a complaint request. I'm sure, they'll get right on it. That would be something. If that was in like a new version. That would be make it worthwhile to upgrade. But otherwise, I'm happy with this older version I have. Where's, um, 
was a program that I used use still. Uh, it was called Aggie, but we've used it, uh, Magma Studio, where we can like draw on the same canvas or whatever. Yeah, and... you can see that. But I pause them. Sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you never played EQ, correct? I never did. Well, I didn't play EQ during the time that everybody else played it. I gave it a like a two hour shake on the modern version or whatever and I was like whatever it was before I don't think this is it anymore and then I stopped after a couple hours so that's it's like the EQ that's on Steam or whatever oh yeah if you tried modern EQ that's nothing like yeah Sorry, I totally cut you off. You were, were you talking about Magma or something? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, magma. Um, one of the... Um, my friend uses it a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. To the point where I think they're probably the, the most like active users. One of the most active users on Magma. Um, which is a lot. But... Uh, uh, they reached out for like a like an interview or whatever just to get like an idea of what the users might want um, and that sort of thing and uh, he made some suggestions but then also sent them over to me to make some suggestions and uh, I don't know if they got to it but uh, we were able to get like direct feedback with the developers which was kind of cool that's cool. Oh, and another thing, which was uh, someone on my chat mentioned that uh, it might be cool if Were Rats had like a, you know how like there's they're human and like at night or whatever the Were Rat comes out. Um, if there was like a section or like a certain moon cycle or something where they turn into a rat and then like they become a were rat instead. So there's like a, a three way sort of like trans... Like a, just a regular rat that turns into a were rat? Yeah. So you're is like there, you're thinking you, you is there something else? Is, is there another type of like were creature that's something else? Like a. Or am I, am I just getting confused with Wargan for some reason? Because I wonder if there's like, like a, like a die. Maybe I'm thinking of like a dire thing. What if, what if there was like another thing where it's like a dire rat or something and would turn into a dire rat? Hmm. Yeah. I yeah. Like a. I I think I'm I'm just like leaning in into that because I, I like that idea enough where I'm like hey is there enough like moon cycles where like maybe every once in a while like every like 30 days or something like that like a moon cycle happens and they turn into rats instead and you're like wait I thought this camp was this oh I it's see just a yeah yeah that'd be cool rats. I'm curious how, how far we go with that cycle stuff yeah uh, you guys are saying um, live and TL and TLPs are not good for EQ and I I had the I had the impression that that was the case that it wasn't like the same that back then I had the impression now now I'm very aware that live EQ is like, it's like as looked down upon as like, like retail WoW, almost. I don't know why my pin message went away. I. And set a timer on it or something.
Are you still playing EQ2 these days? Nah, man, I, I kind of... I don't know, I, I kind of, I, I went to like, I wanted to play with, um, Nathan and his, his gang, but he was kind of out sick, and I sort of, um, I was playing a healer, so I, was, I couldn't really do anything on my own, I was just kind of like, meh, I should probably just spend my time working on Eminem anyway, so. Didn't work out. Yeah, that's how I feel. Anytime, like, I come across, like, spare time to, like, do game stuff or whatever, to, like, actually play a game, I kind of go, like, yeah, but, like, I could have used this time and have been done a texture, <laughs> you know, or, or something like that. So. Maybe that's unhealthy. I don't know, but yeah, I think it, it's it's difficult when it comes to MMOs. But I think like a single player game, it's easy to be like, eh, let's just play tonight. You know, I picked up um, Dungeon Siege One. I like installed that and I was playing a little bit um, last week or something. And man, that game slaps still. Like, I don't know. Like, I think it's probably pure nostalgia for me because like I played it as a kid, but. Um, I don't know, it's something about that game and, and the way they built that world. It's so basic and generic, but it, it's just ignites something in me. I love it. Dude, I love generic, man. I you know me, I, I love generic. I was looking at the... At the, the textures actually because like you know after all the stuff we've gone through it's like i wonder how they did the, this stuff because they have a lot of um a lot of options but their helmets are just these dumb buckets on their head it's so silly um but in terms of like because like so you make your character they're in in the in the first game there's no race options it's human but you can be a male or female and you pick your outfit it's just like your skin texture which is just like clothing so they have they actually have 10 pairs of pants and 10 shirts that you can pick from you can just mix and match all of those and then that's your oh, cool. that's your character and then there's like a couple faces too um i didn't count how many of those are but i was like damn there's kind of a lot for like just like the underwear layer that you'll never see again unless you die i guess yeah but i was like i kind of put a lot of effort into that it was interesting It's a game where you, uh, when you die, you lose your spellbook too, by the way. Oh, that's sick. I picked up Hades and Hades 2 based on your recommendation in the music. Very impressed. Yeah, I, I don't know if I, I beat that game yet. Like, I got as far as getting out of the gate into i think i got to the surface world but then there's like the final fight which i got trashed <laughs> i got trashed on and i was like i don't know if i can make it back there anymore um so i don't know what else is beyond that point i don't know if that is kind of the end of the game or not but um the music is definitely great I just kind of never played it again after that. And I was like, eh. I beat the game as far as I'm concerned. Maybe I'll go back to it at some point. But... You ever play CRPGs? What's, what's CRPG? I feel like I should know what that is. Card role playing games, Chinese role playing games. Oh, maybe it's a card game, yeah. Okay. Unrelated, sort of, but speaking of fucking. There was this. There was this fucking video, and I swear to God, it was like 2000, and I don't, I don't know, it was like 2000, like. 
it was like when YouTube essentially just sort of like came out. But there is this game for original Xbox called Iron Phoenix, and it was cool. It was this like 16 person beat em up sort of game where there'd be eight players on one side, eight players on the other, and you'd all have like these cool fucking combos. And the combos could be like tagged in with other people for like multi people combos. So there's like teamwork involved, and you built up your special, and there was all these different, there's like nine different weapons or something. You know, and they all played and had their own like uses. It was cool as hell. And it was like, it was like a uh, sort of this feudal dark fantasy China. And there was a bunch of zombies. And anyway, it was, it was cool as hell. But the game was essentially just an arena. There was no story mode. There was no anything. And I was looking online, like, I don't know, my young self was looking online and I found that that exact game, like, like the exact game, animations, all the player move sets. I think they changed the player models and some of the levels was just like the exact same as like this other game in China. And I'm like, who ripped off who? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> was it? Was it Sega that ripped off this Chinese game that's like super niche and just wanted to see if it worked? Or was it this Chinese game that was like, dude, fucking free real estate. <laughs> like, we'll take that. So I don't know. Fuck. I, I wish there was someone. Maybe I should do some internet sleuthing. Uh, from YouTube, Kip. Gear, Gear Tree says, uh, any chances of a sneak peek at Trolls? We're not doing Trolls yet. We've already, I feel like we've already done a sneak peek of them. I think there might be stuff floating around. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. savvy enough to dig it up. But, yeah, yeah, go we're, find it. We're not actively working on them right now. It would be cool to be able to, uh, like, I, I have hope that we will be able to, like, find a way to, um, because I, I kind of feel like right now we have some stuff that there's some sort of technical hurdles and sort of getting caught up on, like, getting things up to the latest version of what we're trying to do. But after we get all that stuff sorted out, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that maybe we'll be able to kind of pull a bit of a hat track. Patrick and get more stuff than we promised. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I won't promise to promise more. <laughs> but I you don't know. We'll see. There is, there's, my hope is, is that, but, uh, you know, the reality is stuff always kind of gets in the way. So it'd be cool, though. Let's see. Um, Waldo says classic. So the CRPG is classic role-playing games like Baldur's Gate, um, Icewind Dale, Planescape, Pillars of Eternity, or computer role-playing games. That's probably what I was thinking of. So it was a familiar ac acronym, but I just haven't... I don't think anybody really uses CRPG anymore for, like, computer role-playing. It's the difference is, like, tabletop. But yeah, anyway, um, my brother played... My brother was really into Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale and Planescape, so I, I watched him play those. But I, I never really got into those myself as actually playing them. Like, I, I've tried a couple times to get into Baldur's Gate because it actually looks like a cool game, and um, I kind of I, I want to get into that and try it and that sort of thing, but um, my, my dumb brain doesn't like all the that much reading. I, I like to murder things. I don't like to... I don't like to do as much of the, the reading and the storytelling stuff, so... That kind of always... I don't know, I just never went back to them after some of that stuff. Or, or maybe it's just the story wasn't gripping enough, because I actually did get all the way through Neverwinter Nights, and I really enjoyed that game. 
story and all. I think it's because the story was so compelling for that one that kind of keep kept me coming back. I think, yeah, that's probably the only, like, sort of, um, turn-based kind of tactical RPG of that type that I got into, Neverwinter Nights, that I actually beat. Um, but other, other than that, it's, like, a lot of Diablo-esque type games, like, um, Nox I really liked, and the Diablo games, of course, and... I think the Dungeon Siege games fall into that category as well. Same sort of thing. Like, I remade Final Fantasy 1 with all the classes and new quests to get them. Uh, I got about halfway in the game and... Dude, Final Fantasy 1 remake? Can you post that in my channel, please? I'd like to see that. That's something I think I'd, I'll always want to do at some point, maybe once I have more, more like, I don't know, uh, free time and less, less pressure to do, you know, like, work and succeed in the industry, that sort of thing. Like, I feel like, I feel like I'd want to do like an art mod for like one of the Final Fantasy games, just replace all the art. Like the cool. skin of it. Yeah. That's kind of what I was doing before I joined the m, &M team. I was working on that uh, EverQuest Unity project. I was, I was planning on like doing high-res high versions of all the models and everything. Dude. <laughs> or at least upscaled version, not like high-res, but... I don't know. Whatever it wound up being, I guess. And the Eminem guys robbed robbed EverQuest of a Yeah, but like you said, like I mean, the prop part of the problem is I mean the the two issues were uh number one, there's no money in that and it it would yeah. I would have to I would I would be sacrificing both working on my personal portfolio to further my career, as well as um, you know that would be my hobby that I would I would be doing. Um, so it, you'd have to be in a specific place in your life to be comfortable with that, I guess. Mm. And I, I wasn't really there, so it didn't really make a sense from that standpoint. Um, but also like. The kind of working on those models, you're locked into uh, some of the things that already exist. Like, like imagine trying to model a thing, and, and then you're not allowed to change the UVs. Ooh. And imagine those UVs were made 20 years ago <laughs> with like older tech. So it's like that's it's a challenge. Quick question: When was the last time you hit stage? I mean, at some point, that just kind of becomes the style. <laughs> like, you kind of like accept it, the limitations of the of the tech or whatever. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, it, I can. It's it's not un unachievable. It was definitely it would have been a lot of effort. It's doable. Yeah. Um, just uh, I don't know. I think it, it would have been easier. It's it's always easier to just like make new shit, right? And that's that's kind of what part of the draw with Eminem was like, oh, it's a new thing. We can make start from scratch and like do it a different way. And I'm not beholden to having to um, keep the UVs a certain way or something. Yeah, no. UVs are in the ass. So. I wonder what the wonder what the um the World of Warcraft workflow is. I think that'd be cool to to try out at some point, just to sort of test, you know, 
<laughs> like, like just making content for that and see how it goes. It'd be interesting. Cause their their UVs were especially recently the, the new the new stuff feels like really good. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. I was when we were when I started working on Eminem, I looked up the. I tried to dig up a model. I actually got my hands on the human, the classic human, from WoW, yeah. and like the way they did their UVs, were is pretty good. They they got everything on one sheet, but the problem is, um, it's it's all mirrored. So that's that's what we gave up, right? That's why we have yeah. our head on a different thing is because we opted to have asymmetry. So. Yeah, asymmetry and also the, yeah, the theirs was like super boxed too. So eventually people end up like kind of, or I feel like their armor design and stuff started, uh, ended up looking like, I don't know, a little bit too like, what's the, what's the right word like abstract you know vanilla textures look really good but i, I think feel they like, yeah. it seems like they emphasized uh the focus of your eye on shoulder pads in the helmet and yeah like more more yeah. silhouette stuff like the actual design on the chest is was just kind of noise yep and then exactly. a, a lot of the the kind of eye gripping stuff is like big shoulder pads um and then they have like the, the glove silhouette and the boot silhouette um and just all that stuff so it's it's like more it's like almost the texture is kind of almost irre irrelevant it's just like colors that's why they can kind of get away with that i guess yeah just the um the, i mean it fits their style fucking awesome though because it's like when i'm going through that i'm not thinking uh this isn't a realistic chain, you know, or whatever, you know, like fucking you go through all the chain and you're like, what about this says chain? Like, like I have no idea that their, their chain doesn't represent chain at all or anything. It's just, just items with colors and, and, uh, shapes and stuff. But yeah, the, and then the emphasis on the shoulders. And that's why, that's why their emphasis was like, like hat shoulders, uh, are like their silhouettes that they get to play with. I, I guess eventually they ended up like pulling into like some new like uh, special like boots and um, uh, what's it called? And I think they had like a couple different like arm slots or gloves as well, but yeah. I'm not familiar with the a lot of the new stuff um they got some they got some cool stuff yeah some of the i like some of the, the models and stuff from like just from what i've seen of the new this new expansion and all like the streams and um videos and stuff like like those hero models at least they look pretty nice so definitely a specific almost kind of like disney or pixar -y style um they look they yeah. look clean it's nice. They used to feel like they've feel like they've lost their uh it's not their Warcraft. So, yeah. Like what what it used to be. Like just looking at their so you can look at their like null and be like like oh that looks like a null, but then you compare it to their old null, and the old null is like fucking high contrast gnarled fucking like black lips with shiny gloss on them and it's looks super sick and they're like yeah i i really like their old gnolls a whole lot more than their new gnolls but their new gnolls do look fucking good <laughs> it's not yeah you know i think um like a fear box is saying a high contrast i think that was kind of a yeah. thing um just in general because you know if you think about the everquest stuff too like it's it's pretty similar like in design uh the more saturated colors and um that sort of thing where it's it's kind of a focus on silhouette to a certain extent of just like getting the large shapes the blocks of color in 
in the detail. Although I think EverQuest probably has, they used a lot of like photo, clo not photo realistic, but like kind of close to photo real esque um, level of detail of things, which filled in that sort of yeah. negative space. But I wonder, oh, oh, you got some fucking tier one subs, dude. Oh, shit. Snail Juice with five tier one gift subs. Thanks, man. Scruffy Bard, Evil Kitten, Flintlock Pixel. Hey, it's Radar. Hey, or Raider, I should say. Just Ray. How you doing, man? And 3PO. Someone was saying something up front, up there, too, I wanted to mention. Unchained says. Uh, have you seen or played Dungeon Master 1987? I have not seen that. Um, this this looks like um, so I haven't played this specific game, but this re instantly reminds me of um that other one because there's a lot of games that are this sort of format, where it's like a dungeon crawly first person thing what's that what was that big one that was um might and magic was it might and magic might and magic seven or something whichever one this one is six might and magic six the legend of uh Gr grim 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 rock yeah, Grimrock, I think. Was all yeah, I have those ones, too. I, I haven't played them a bunch, though, but this one was cool. I don't think I got very far on these ones, but something about these is um, it's pretty cool. Something that I, I actually wonder, uh, a little bit going back to... Um, to the wow like like the contrast thing is something that i noticed with the low level stuff for vanilla wow at least is they're very low contrast and then the further you get up in your gear the more high contrast your gear looks and then eventually instead of switching from high contrast they kind of start introducing like more like flower or more uh color and saturation and a part of me is wondering, like, maybe that's that, like, flow chart of, like, power gain, like, visual power gain is actually what, I mean, I think, I think EverQuest probably did a little bit of that from what I've seen. But maybe that, that, like, hey, this powerful thing is super red and cool or whatever, um, being, like, dragon armor or whatever, right? Maybe that is kind of what led to uh, World of Warcraft just, you know, being, like, a little bit too show, too cartoony, too... Not not cartoony, but, like, like abstract shapes of random stuff, you know? I'm wondering, like... What if you started with, like, really saturated... And you just kind of devalued that right from the get-go. And it's all about just looking specifically cool in whatever you can find. I don't know if that's the right way of thinking about it, but thought experiment, I guess. I think the the progression for EverQuest, at least in the in between for the trilogy, like classic to um Velius. I think that progression it might be different because in all of those years of those expansions and all that and all those levels um the the armor that you got was still limited by the texture they only had like what was it um they had leather chain plate that was it you had one set so if you were a barbarian warrior you'd get a leather set, it would always look that same same way, no matter what what it was. If it was a leather set, it would always look like that one leather set. 
And all, mm. the, all barbarians had that. So, and then if you upgraded to chain, same thing. And then, uh, you know, plate, obviously the same thing. So you only got, you only, you only ever looked a, a certain way. Um, and, and the, the way they differentiated that to get more was just through tints, but there was also each class got their custom texture set, right? So it was, it wasn't like within your own little sphere, like your own little self, you, you're mm -hmm. pretty limited, but through the fact that all the races, when you see other people running around, they look different. They always look different because they can never look like you. Um, it, I think it, it distracted from that. It didn't make you feel like everybody always looked the same. Um, I think it, I think that's a very interesting thought experiment, actually. It's, it's kind of breaking down how that works because they were so limited. Like, and even the the tints and stuff. Um, I I'd have to you'd have to actually go through and that's... see how much they actually used it because I don't think they used it like a ton because of the way it was. Um, it was very primitive tinting and it kind of destroyed the texture a bit. Um, so it was only like maybe more of the high end stuff. So like one to 40 like maybe actually maybe 30 or 40 when you start getting like the bronze armor or something is when you maybe start seeing some of that stuff um so like those first 30 levels everyone's weren't like we're in the same just basic textures and stuff so it's kind of interesting i wonder i wonder how that actually plays in because like how much how many like class overlaps did you ever get you know like if you're saying they're was it class or race uh, specific it was race textures? R race and gender specific. So like, barbarian male has three custom sets. Barbarian female has three custom sets. Um, I see. I see. But it was like just based purely on the armor class. Um. Because because I wonder just because uh, like like that makes a whole lot of. If it was class, it makes a whole lot of sense um, that different classes would be playing with each other, and therefore you wouldn't really see, you know, like something that looks like you, because you look like your class. But if it was race, then it's a little bit different. Right. Yeah. So if you had like, if you were in a group and you had like two Shadow Knights, you had a Troll Shadow Knight and like a Dark Elf Shadow Knight. They would look pretty different. Yeah. Because, like, even, even, like, even those two, like, um, let's say you have the, let me pull it up. I think, I think it's the leather. The, the Dark Elf leather looks, it's blue. It's not even, like, a brown. Like, it's a totally different color. And then the troll, sh troll leather is, like, a raggedy brown. Like, it's, it doesn't even cover him entirely. So, like. It's like just just those two, two same class, same armor, drastic look like, different looks. It's kind of interesting. I think we need to play into some of that with our itemization. You know, once once we have like full, uh, uh, what's it called? Once we have like our full game released or whatever, and uh, you know, people are choosing a choosing a goblin and they're doing like they're hanging out by the goblin doing the goblin newbie zone stuff like not newbie zone but just like that area around it having like goblinish gear versus like having like uh you know like a, a deep elf or something where the deep elf has like their gear or whatever that they would sort of plug into the same thing like going if someone wants like you know, Night Harbor gear, they'd go there and they'd get like sort of Night Harbor ish themed stuff. I feel like yeah, that would be yeah, cool I think as fuck. The the so what I'm hoping that we'll be able to do is first in order to even do that we need we need those textures. Um yeah. and what I'm hoping that we'll we'll be able to do is have those textures and then since we're doing like region based stuff, you know, we could have like the goblin chain you know, you get it in the goblin area, and if you're a goblin, you'll just get it naturally. But if you wander mm. over as like an ogre, and then you pick that stuff up, you'll look like I don't. So that's the thing. Like, 
does that make sense to like you start looking like the guys you're hanging out with kind of thing i i love that because it makes like it 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 you're like fashion questing it up at that point you know like people are like dude the trolls look so cool i'm gonna go hang out with the trolls uh even though i'm blank because i want to see what the what the troll gear will look like and maybe there's like I don't know, maybe there's like a, a whole trade system with that too, because I'd imagine some like Night Harbor being this hub is probably going to end up getting like all these other pieces of gear from people that eventually travel there and it becomes more eclectic and, uh, and cosmopolitan as we want it to. Yeah, I think it's it's the part where people start mixing around with each other of the different cultures where it starts to get interesting i i guess i'm just like and maybe i'm overthinking it and it's a non-issue um but like in those early stages and, and you'd have to actually it would take a lot of effort actually i think to get to another location at a low level um to be able to start to integrate with the culture <laughs> um and then, but yeah. like, I don't know if that would, I don't know if that would take away from it or not, uh, but maybe the fact that it would be so rare that it's a non-issue. Well, and you know, like, fuck our closest zone right now, like you'd have to weasel your way through Night Harbor to get all the way to like Califrey, right? And it's like, just to get that gear set or the that sort of gear that's dropped in you know that's i like that i think that's cool as hell yeah well anyway though so this this is a kind of a collage of people in chainmail and this is all just regular chain you can see just how wide how wide the spectrum is in terms of looks of just the same because like if everybody yeah. just put like regular chainmail on they'd all look different right so it's pretty cool makes you it, it adds to race uh identity a lot. yeah so yeah so that's i don't know if that's i wonder how that would impact things like i i think one way we can ensure that there is still some race identity is putting race locks on gear and putting those particular gears things on um oh that would be cool too yeah i so i don't know man like maybe maybe reputation based or something it, it's true it's, it feels like a tricky balance though right because like okay if we are we are we itemizing in order to incentivize people to look a certain way based on identity or are we making um we're making a cool widespread set of stuff and then people can kind of do whatever they want but then are we going to end up with kind of um uh, consolidation what's the word when everybody looks the same so that would that would kind of suck too i think if everybody looked the same because like best in slot shit you know i don't know yeah 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 I feel like I feel like the good the the sick answer for this is like making it harder with like rep or something rep grinds. It's like you know, uh, well you because know because you are a certain rep you know with like goblins, but you're never gonna get fucking be able to wear this gnome thing because well, actually you know, you know what I think the a good way to do it kind of kind of in sort of what you're saying is having having the same equipment like multiple times like you know how we'll have regional arm mm. armor is just yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. okay you, you can get the the you know the the goblin chainmail is equivalent in stats to the troll chainmail so there's no best in slot that forces everybody into one look uh, i think that's probably the best way to do it and then you yeah. you still have the option to like look like a troll trying to fit into a goblin t-shirt or something. I like that. I like that a lot. And then I'd imagine that there'd just be certain pieces 
that we could do you know rep grinds or whatever for or like rep yeah you know like well yeah i mean if like a but, sword or something right 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 yeah it's like you can still get your hands on the stuff but it's gonna you're gonna have to do a little bit more work to get it i think that's fair and then when people see you with like a like a cool dwarven sword as like a as like a fucking elf or as like a goblin you go holy shit that guy knows what's up like like it's kind of like a status symbol where you're like you're like okay that goblin is either you know like a like a cool with us or maybe has like this this item that you can get or whatever that's stolen from something and so it's like I feel like you could do some really cool stuff with that where items mean something beyond just stats where it's like it, it entails like a certain type of rep yeah. and especially combined with like uh with like different uh faction stuff where you're like yeah yeah in in everquest i i made a troll a troll beast lord and i ran over to the wood elf town and i started murdering orcs and i murdered so many orcs that i could take the the elevator up into town without being murdered <laughs> the the merchants still wouldn't sell to me but i could run around town anyway pretty cool how much would you need to do for the merchants to sell to you or is that just not achievable um so they're on a different faction than like the guards and that sort of thing i don't know i'm sure it's 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 probably doable um i don't know who i'd have to kill or if it's just more orcs and just <laughs> significantly more but... show me who to kill <laughs> i will do it yeah i think there should always always be a method to, to obtaining that sort of thing yeah because it just it lets people sink some time into something for something really cool and rare that gives them a little bit of uh like social social like equity almost you know people like grinding yeah. that shit there's there's one guy yeah. on the p99 server i heard about who he set out to become maxed out on every faction that he could in game every Whoa. single one um how does that even work oh do they not have like uh like zero sum games um yeah i don't know i think um there's there's got to be somewhere like when you try to faction up with one it lowers the other so it, it's it's probably impossible but he i don't know I, I didn't look into it you know in great detail i just kind of vaguely remember this but I, yeah your box says uh you could always get dubiously but i don't think you could ever shop with Chifei merchants okay do you know if there's fear box do you know if there's a way to like i guess if you could up it then you could achieve that so maybe it's not possible i think i think having factions that where there's no way to get it up haha <laughs> get it up um i don't know how i feel about that i feel like there should always be a way because like why why is there a faction that just there's no way to make them happy like that seems weird maybe orcs and uh, makes sense I, for i mean for i guess our orcs. i guess so maybe i don't know i don't know man i that's, that's a tough one can you faction with orcs in in everquest um probably i know the the dark elves are friendly with the crushbone orcs because they're trying to so a little bit of lore here the okay the 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 dark elves and the crush run orcs or at least the the dark elves are trying to help out help the crush run orcs because they want to take over or kill all the the good elves right so they're they have an ambassador actually there's a there's an npc in the castle in Crushbone that like sits behind the the king of the orcs there um and he's like He's kind of like uh, Wormtongue from Lord oh, of the sick. Rings. He's just like advising the the orc, um, crush, the King Crush or whatever, the Emperor as he's known. Um, so little, there's a little, and w when you um, kill the orcs, you're actually losing faction with the Dark Elves too. So 
If you go over there as a dark elf and kill those guys, you're kind of screwing your faction with your own your own buds. Ambassador Devin, yeah. That dude's a high level dude too. He's like lo a level 19, something like that in, you know, um, level 16 or so is probably when you check out on the orcs. 23. Oh shit, he's that low high level? Yeah, man, he'll fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, I love Crushbone though. I don't I don't care. Like I always went to Crushbone. Um Crushbone and Fade War in general is like my, one of my favorite places. Spyro color Drake. You got it, dude. I don't know if that's gonna be in game, but I'll I'll do that for fun. I am definitely a Spyro fan. Orc Hill, Crushbone, Unrest, Mistmore. Mist, so Mistmore Castle Entrance is probably one of my favorite camps in the game. Uh, especially, well, as an enchanter specifically, but just in general. Um, what a fantastic place. Mistmore... Crushbone, Miss Moore, and the whole. Some of the best dungeoning in the game, in my opinion. I think Del Delner's. Is Delner's Tomb? Or. Whatever, Delner's. Whatever it's. Whatever type of dungeon it is. I think that one's really cool too, but that one's not very. popular. Gellinger's Crypt, yeah. What's your favorite zone based on your skills that are... that make you go, ah, good job, boys. Um... So I had, um... But the hole, the hole is one because that's that's a really that's such a really fun thing because it's so dangerous. I mean, actually, it's not that dangerous, but it's it feels it feels more dangerous than maybe it is because um, getting it the difficulty of getting in and out of that place is such a high a bar, um, especially when you get to the the bottom, right? Um, it's like. It's almost like it feels like a suicide mission sometimes because it's like there's no way out. <laughs> the you know, we're we're doing this or we're or we're uh we're dying kind of thing. But actually one of the coolest moments I had um was in um dude, what's it called? What's what's the dungeon with the the undead dragon in it and the the undead bard tracking on what's what's that one Seb, yeah sebelis um 
Sebelis is is kind of like the hole in that regard where it's like um it's so dangerous the deeper you go it feels like it's like a you know you're a ride or die kind of thing i feel like that builds a lot of com camaraderie with that sort of thing where it's just like guys we're doing this or we're all fucked you know um and i remember um there's this one i forget we were doing that that one camp where it's got the four tombs or named with the little stairs in the middle um it, and it's like i think it's beyond the locked door so you, you need a rogue to pick lock the, the door to even get there and then you're you're locked in um and we had a bad pull it, it might be disco is disco is disco with frog locks or is disco with undead because it was it was the undead and golem one i forget i forget the name of the camp um but anyway the we had some bad pull we got like a bunch of golems um there was like it was like eight of them or something it was like a, a lot of a lot of them and i was on my enchanter and i just i slapped down that hey we stun and i just started um mezzin shit and i was like trying to get on a rotation and i was holding it together pretty well for the most of it and then i just i i had my my low level mez loaded because it was just more mana efficient um but i couldn't keep up the time the time rotation on it so eventually i missed a recharge a, a remez and one of them got loose and beat me to death and i went down um but it was pretty badass to like derail a train like that um and i i like i was so close we were so close to because like everyone was like we're fucked we're dead and then you know you just kind of that that's why i like the enchanter because it's like everyone's like running around screaming like chickens with their heads cut off and you're like i got this guys and you can like save the group in that way that's why i play enchanter for moments like that if i if i had a longer charm like what you got to do is have have two mezes loaded i should have done like that's what i learned from that experience is you just you gotta have two mezes loaded low level one and a high level one and then when shit gets real, you bust out that, that longer mez. Why is the chanter so OP in Eminem? Because it's fun, bro. Already, uh, already we're getting, uh, was it favoritism claims? Yeah. Accusations. But I mean, I mean, uh, my class is going to be the most powerful. He's, no, it's actually going to be second most powerful after Nick's favorite class. So. What's yours, Shaman? Is there... Yeah, I have, I have no idea if, <laughs> how strong they are or anything. Shaman is like saying it. Shaman were actually one of the more OP classes in EverQuest, so it wouldn't even be a shock. <laughs> like, Shaman... uh, you know, so Shaman, Shaman and EverQuest, they were a priest class, right? But their their healing was <laughs> they were the weakest healer of all three healers. However, they had the slow, right? And we we have those two and mm -hmm. they had the best slows and that was the game changer and in addition in addition to that at, at max level they got they actually got the strongest heal one of the strongest heals poor poor where it like it regenerated like 300 or 400 health every second for like i don't know how long um so you could like 
top off, top, top somebody off, and they would take they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be taking a ton of damage because they would be slowed, like you slow the enemy. So this kind of basically all that shit combined, like a, a shaman could solo like raid content with their little wolf pet. They would just slow slow the dude, slow the whatever. Like I saw someone do some of the frost giants or something um, with their by themselves. They just slow the giants and send their pet in there and just torpor the pet. And they did some decent damage, like with their melee weapon, even, and their dots. So just, they could do tons of shit. And then, and then I found out this. I don't know how many of you guys out there are aware of this, but I found out that there's a clicky, some sort of like amulet where sh it's like shaman only, and it's, it's like a clicky feign death. So on top of all the shit they already get, they also get a feign death, which is outrageous. So is that clicky hard to get? Yeah, I think it, you need to raid for it or something. And it's only got two charges, but the fact that they get it at all. Yeah, it's plain of sky. Like, it doesn't matter if it's difficult. It's it's something that they can get, right? Dude, I, I, I just know from what I've played with, like, Eminem Shaman, fucking love it. Like, it's a good buffing class. people, fucking one of my favorite things. That's that's generally their specialty, buffing. I feel like I missed a question or something. Oh, I, was, I think I was going to respond to Fielder. Fielder says, you're a good enchanter. You held our unrest group uh, together when he was pulling. Man. I think I confused you and uh, Rupo. I think I, I feel like I grouped with Rupo at some point, and I, I thought that was unrest but maybe maybe i got i group with both you guys at some point separate separate instances So there was a good and unlawful enchanter. Do you know if there is any real pro or con to those? I'm not sure yet. I, I think that might just be like lore, lore related at the moment, but maybe there'll be more reasons to do one or the other at some point. Is that sort of like a a way to differentiate between like I don't know like a, a nice goody two shoes like elf enchanter human enchanter or whatever to like a because we have we have fucking goblin enchanters and uh, deep elf enchanters and, and stuff. yeah so I don't know man I I hadn't thought too much about it but. If you kind of the more I think about it, because like one of the initial concepts you've done with the enchanter, I was all up in arms about because I was like, no, they're supposed to be like cool, good guys. They're like, you know, movie stars kind of thing. But like there is a lot like with the power to like do a lot of mental shit like that, you can really fuck somebody else up. Like you could be you could do some really evil shit. And even in yeah. e even yeah, in that's... uh EverQuest 2, they had the two distinct enchanter you know forks in the road they were essentially the same but you know flavor wise they were like there's an evil one and a good one um so 
uh, I don't know. I don't know, but I, I don't know like if there's a difference for us, like there is in EQ2. I think I feel like it's just lore, but it, it, even just having it in the lore makes uh, allows for people to kind of role play those different venues as well, yeah. right? So and and you know what, like. Um, nothing is stopping us down the line after release or whatever of doing like a evil enchanter look, you know, yep. or like something that is like a little bit like, cause when I thought enchanter and I saw like their kit, I was like, Oh, char okay. That's cool. That's nice. But then I also thought like, like taking control of somebody's willpower and moving them like, or like stopping them or whatever, like, like that's fucked up <laughs> like, that's some evil shit actually <laughs> or can be some very evil shit i love that yeah so yeah you know with the with the whole lizard dude stuff too like i was trying to like um i've been trying to like kind of nudge them towards being less less like the ixar was and the ixar lore is all like their pure evil kind of shit because I, I wanted to be like a lizard enchanted but yeah. like it would t even if we did if if we went full evil lizard like it could still work i think with all that stuff too so. oh yeah yeah also hey nicodemus um if you haven't, Nicodemus, go check out the. Uh, we're doing a duo stream at the moment, so you can. There's a. There should be a little link, on the uh, thing, so you can see both Zukin and myself. Um. There should always be a reaction to a decision. Yeah, I mean, well, so it. Beer box. It's a matter of. Does it make a difference with the class or does it make a difference with how people react to you? Like it could, it could be mm. like a faction thing. Like you just, like when you turn in the note to a guy to be like a registered good guy or whatever, then it like, it gives you like a load of faction with these guys and subtracts with these guys. And then instantly you're like, the world reflects on you in a, in a certain way. Um, so it could, be, it could be done that way. And then we could also do, um, maybe we'll do some like specific spells that require certain things or something. Um, that would be cool. Like with, with the whole thing with the religion stuff, um, <laughs> I wonder if we'll do, I, I, I want to believe with like, there's a whole opportunity for us to do religion, religion based spells or something, I think. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back to fucking my, my, uh, time playing Fable, you know, that old Xbox game, where you could be evil or you could be good, and just some spells were just straight up, like, locked behind being evil, mm -hmm. like, sp like, you could drain life, or you could, like, uh, uh, yeah, have someone, like, essentially charmed or whatever, and that was, that was their evil thing, because it was, like, taking over, you know, and then, like, there were just good spells that you could not max out. I think you could have access to them, but you couldn't max them out unless you were evil or good aligned. Yeah. Well, was that... I guess in Fable, at least, um, you would just do evil shit and then you unlock yeah, yeah, those. Yeah. Um, every every single like quest along the way had like lots of stops and stuff like that for you to go like uh here you go uh this is like your answer to this will either be evil or good you know and eventually just through the story they mapped it out so you'd be like if you chose this way the entire time or if you you know chose this way you'd be like you'd be pretty evil you didn't need to go out of your way to like i don't know kill a bunch of faction or something Mm. or kill a bunch of uh villagers or whatever i think i think i think jade empire also did that where uh they had the two swaps between uh way of the open palm and way of the closed fist and you could only get like certain styles of like fighting depending on uh 
how far you went on to which one. And so, like, there was, like, this cool fighting style. If you did a quest line uh, that you could get, and that quest line, like, whatever you did at the end of that or throughout it, um, you would get, like, a like a specific, like, style or whatever. And I'm not sure how they, like, finessed it, whether or not, like, you could just use it or you needed to be able to use it. But uh, one of them was, like, if you were way of the close fist or whatever, like, one of the things where you just, like, had, like, pocket sand and you'd, like, throw it in their <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Someone watched too much to King of the Hill. Yeah. <laughs> DD based skills spells are always cool. Yeah, but like I think yeah, so like if we have um if we did something like that with DDs, I feel like it would be very easy to I mean I'm not a coder so I don't know, but my logic would assume that like we could do something like that with factions too like um you know, you have to have a certain amount of faction with you know, these good guys in order to cast the spell or whatever. I know we plan on doing some really, really cool stuff with, like, factions that we already have. Like, like everybody knows about the Ashira and everything, but there's also st stuff planned for flip side. And I don't know. It, it might, I'm excited. I'm no. excited for all that faction stuff. Um... Nicodemus asks, is there a limit of number of streams you can stream together? I don't think so. Yeah, you know um, what? Dude, one of these days, it'd be cool to do, get like more people. Maybe we could do like a play test and we just have everybody streaming. That'd be cool. Oh, that would be cool as hell. What about, um, uh, I feel like Nicodemus could honestly join us. Yeah, man. Well, you and Nicodemus were like on the same wavelength. You said the exact same thing. Yeah. I think that would be a really cool way to experience like a like watch the dev stream dev uh, play test. I also chose this layout for the link or whatever just because then you have like both stream chats up or whatever. Though I think every anybody can just go multi-stream and they can change the layout to like one or two or whatever the heck they want. Yeah, another time, Nicodemus. Another time. You'll get it. I don't know how much time I should spend on the bottom of the foot. Oh, you want Ice Comet? You have to prove you want it by having Max Faction Ice Mage Guild. Dude, Skyrim? Uh, I was like a, a lizard. I was the Argonian full mage. And I, I became the the head of um, the the mage college, whatever it's called, the winter something, winter hold, or I forget what it's called. Anyway, so I'm, I'm like, I'm fucking Dumbledore and that shit up. And every time I walk by like this one student, they're like, please, headmaster, take me on an adventure. I want to, you know, experience the world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm like, no, sh fuck off. And like, it got so annoying, like. She did it every time. I'm like, fine, you can come with me. And so I went out. We went off to like this, some caves. There was like some werewolves or something. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna blast these motherfuckers. And I like do like the double double hand like fireball shit. And this bitch just like runs around me, runs right in front of me as I'm fireballing these werewolves, and immediately dies. Every just everything explodes and dies. And I'm like, oh, this fucking bitch. <laughs> I'm like, well, so I guess I don't have to worry about her anymore. And then I go back to the college 
and everyone's pissed off at me because she died. I'm like, what the fuck? They tried to like kick me out of the out of the school. I'm like, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> I was so pissed. Bullshit. Like, do you know who I am? Yeah, I mean, do you I know what I am capable of? <laughs> I don't know if you can kill everybody in that school, but I probably would have if they tried to kick me out. I was just like, all right, fireball for you. Grandmaster, he just snapped. <laughs> there was a there was a point in time where I don't know, I was enjoying I could enjoy like Skyrim a bit, and then like I don't know, something about me could just got obsessed with like playing it like Morrowind. Like, I just wanted to be able to read the text and figure out where I needed to go from the text and then figure that out myself without there being a fucking map pointer or whatever. But the game is, like, wired that way, where there is no other option to play because they did not design for it. And I, I on if there's a mod out there that someone knows about that can, like, that just transfers, like, all the quests and has, like, write-ups or whatever for all the quests that would be sick but i just don't think it's in the books for me and skyrim anymore i got obsessed with it and now i can't like undo it like you you want to be able to play skyrim without gps kind of stuff yeah there's probably there's probably uh isn't there like a it's like a maybe I'm thinking of Assassin's Creed, but there's like a, a like when you start the game, it's like what mode do you want to play it as? And one of them uh, is like none of that stuff. I think, uh, uh, I think Thief came out with something like that. I want to believe where... that there's there's got to be a mod for that for Skyrim too. Yeah, there there has to be some fucking mod for it, but I couldn't find one. So I mean. If if somebody else finds one or sees one or whatever, then or knows of one, please let me know. Also, f fucked up. <laughs> uh, okay. This angle needs to be far more back. I remember EverQuest fireballs. You used to be able to intercept and take the damage or accidentally hurt somebody. Yeah, I don't know how those worked. I don't think ours... Our, I think ours function more like... Like WoW type stuff where it's, it's just um, visually flying. It's not actually flying. You can't get hit by them. I was uh, I was pitching at one point to uh, to Nick that we could like, um, if you're like in a group or something, uh, that uh, was it. People could line of sight you if you're an archer. Well, that'd be kind of fun because then you could. Like your your gameplay is essentially like trying to find like a good line of sight to just like shoot from, and uh, and also like position yourself in in the correct distance away or something. I think that would be cool as hell. But I don't know if we're gonna go that route or not. I'm I'm really excited for the archer actually. Lots of cool mechanics that I think uh, we want to try out. Yeah, the archer definitely needs more. Um, stuff right now, I think. Yeah. Want it to be a class that stands on its own. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I'm, like, really excited for is, like, um, if we can get it so, like, there's, like, a sweet spot distance per spell or something. Or not, not per spell, but maybe, like, per stance. Um, because then you could, like, stand, like, 15... 
you know, yards away or whatever versus like 20 and do like a little bit more damage just based off of like how far away you are. But it might be annoying if uh, uh, if we do that with uh, campfires or whatever. You know, what would be cool is if like there was like a height advantage. You did a little bit more damage if you're higher on the Z plane. And then you could give oh, like man. you could you could do like a you know like let's say you're in worm spain you feel like you're on one of those inclines you're just kind of shooting down the stairs or something that'd be cool or uh. if you'd have to like if you're out in the out in the wilderness you'd have to like kite something around and then get it positioned so that you're you have the high ground anakin um or even like if there was some way to craft like a box to stand on <laughs> Can gnomes Dude, be archers? Actually... I don't think so. <laughs> they just immediately get like worse off. Yeah. <laughs> I think goblins probably the shortest. Oh no, halflings can be archers too, right? Uh, goblins and halfling archers. Dude, ogre cli- archers. Dude, tree climbing. Oh, shit. That's that's one of the three Ps. Yeah. 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 What? Actually. Dude. Okay. All right. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. We got an idea here. So you know how hey, Nick. <laughs> So you know how we have um gnome, gnomes riding ogres. What if we have like halflings riding tree formed druids? What a fucking combo <laughs> that would be. Cause like halflings can already be druids and archers. That would make like a, a duo pair right there. That'd be like one of those um meta meta groups or something small race could ride wolf form that's that's tempting it's tempting. Yeah, imagine if tree form was climbable. And then you could you basically would have ever everyone would want a druid with them because that's basically like a mobile ladder you could like climb anything that'd be so op these are great ideas been up here bed nick's not here Druid tanks mm-hmm. back to get the tree form. Archers rangers have a perch skill. Oh, perch is kind of cool. I like that. I'd love it if it was like a, uh, if it was like a mud action or something that only they had access to. I like, so I didn't know, I guess the stances have been in a while at this point. Um, and it wasn't something that I thought we were doing um, early on. But I'm not against it. Actually, I think they're pretty cool and there's a lot you can do there. Um, I think if we really pushed it, like Vanguard had a lot of um, stances and stuff, and they did a lot of interesting things with them, actually. And I think it would be cool to push that to that extent or close to that extent anyway have like a i mean the 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 perch could even be just like a stance like it's like a stance that 
you put yourself in and it, you basically can't move. It's like a root, but you do more damage. That'd be pretty cool. That's very, that's yeah. actually a, a very simple, but very interesting mechanic right there. Yeah, I like that. Because you, then you can't kite, right? So that would actually be better yep. for being in a group. Yep. Okay, fucking write these down. Write these <laughs> down, people. Yeah, the uh, one of the one of the things that I had uh, suggested as well for Archer was uh, some sort of like like armor or not armor arrow knocking or whatever. So it takes a little bit of like preparation to do stuff. You can't just go like often, you know, like uh, uh, like if you know that you're going to be doing damage in a bit, right? You have like or for a bit. Then you like knock your damage arrows and then uh it means that you know you can just shoot those those arrows like no problem um and if you want to do a different like like a stun or something like that you would knock your your stun or your cc arrows or whatever it's your stance and then that means that you know you have to kind of preemptively do it instead of do it like reactively and i thought that would be like pretty hard but also pretty cool and i guess the timing would also have to play into it but it would make them a little bit more thought uh uh yeah make their make their gameplay a little bit more thought inducing than just like when i see thing i do thing you know would that would that mean you have to knock every arrow or is that just like no no it'd be like it'd be like grouped or something so there's like damage arrows or like cc arrows or like uh or something like that is that so would that be kind of like um how you memorize a spell would you have to like be basically kind of memorizing your arrows for and then you'd use them and they go away and you'd have to like re-knock a bunch or something no I, I i'd imagine it would just be like a, um like a like a stance that you cast or something oh okay and so it'd be like one cast bar away right um but if you know you're going to be oh. doing a lot of it. Then... Oh, okay. I think I, I think it's what you're talking about. So it's like you're kind of switching from doing damage arrow to like CC arrow or something. You can't like just reactively fire different types of arrows. Yeah. Gotcha. And so and so it takes just a slight bit amount of planning and getting used to things, right? When you're pulling, you go, okay, I'm pulling. Um, I need to do this and it puts you in a little bit more danger and gives other classes a little bit more like like uh, what's it called uh, prevalence there for like stuns or roots or whatever because you have to unless you're really good if you're a really good archer then like you'd see that shit coming and you know you'd knock your right arrows and you'd be fucking on point yeah that'd be cool I think it would be cool if that was something that you could do while moving so you could like it would take yeah. it would take, take some time but you could still kind of do your kite and then you could like hunker you like switch to like the aimed arrow or or the perch or whatever and like maybe you would you maybe you would like add like some cast time to your fight your arrow fires but you do more damage yeah that'd be cool that's that sounds pretty dope actually i'd, I'd play that there's like a you could do like a uh like a short range or something or other and then like a like a perch and then like a cc and have those be like three stances that you have to sort of knock before you go. and it, it doesn't mean it changes your spells or whatever like world of warcraft it, when you change your stances you have like a full new fucking like bar or whatever it would just like affect those spells differently or like sort of lock them out or or whatever not uh, affect those spells but um abilities i guess because archers have abilities not spells yeah i also oh fucking k okay, archer um you know how we're talking about different different types of um uh enchanter like looks or whatever 
I feel like we could bring back like the the first archer concept as well that that more Robin Hoodish, you know, and then have the current one that that I've done the more Mongolish, like be the other. And so there's like multiple takes on on like a on a single type of gear. And imagine you we could, could do that with Paladin too. If you did that, I would suggest taking the the Mongol one and pushing it a little bit darker. Yeah, because like um, to go back to like EverQuest, because like EverQuest two, they have all, all their classes have a good and evil split, right? So like the the ranger, they don't have an archer, but the the ranger is the archer kind of. Um, they have the the ranger is the good guy is the Robin Hood, and their evil version is called an assassin actually and so it's kind of like a i mean it's it's they they don't they have some archery but they're they're a lot of like dagger and poison as well so it's not a full thing but um i don't know if you ever have you ever watched any of the um the flash tv series or the arrow tv series any of those ones i watched all no, of them because no, no. i'm a fucking nerd but um they have like a, a like a dark archer he's like a like a spooky black man with a black arrow and all that shit. It's pretty cool looking, actually. You know, you, it'd be it'd be interesting to like. You probably don't want to go full tilt, um, but just kind of basically a rogue, like a roguish archer, would be kind of neat. We could probably uh, uh, get a lot of that with um, what's it called, with our larps. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Take the um, Robin Hood one, tint it black, and stick a new hat on there. Even yeah, and he can be like the civilized rogue or whatever. How many? How many fingers? Do were rats have? Five, I guess. Five. They'd have five. They'd, They'd have to lose a well, finger in transformation. I mean, they could. Maybe that's the difference between rat men and were rats. Rat men could have three fingers. Well, yeah. On. What's the before I jump ahead of myself? What's the painting that I did? What I? How many fingers did I give these guys? Rogue, rogue healing, throwing daggers. That's a pretty cool idea, actually. Oh, I did give Ratman three fingers. I think, um, I like a, a healing arrow or or some sort of something like that is is interesting. Um, and part of me is like, yeah, but another part of me is like, well, why don't we just make a new healing class that's Kind of like a blood mage or something where it's like full full tilt like damage healing kind of thing i, I feel like defiant possums onto something if you were to give a heal or something you would do that through like first aid and maybe you just have throwable healing potions yeah yeah we should let's steal more of his ideas <laughs> <laughs> Coating an arrow with Oliveira, shooting at your tank. I think uh, uh, what's it called? Both, both ranger and um, ranger and archer could get a whole lot of like. What's the what's the right word like? Could get a whole lot utility. of variance out of yeah variance of of utility out of like I don't know having it reagent specific you know where like you require a certain reagent to make a certain arrow and you need to prep those arrows and and I'll, and it's sort of like they're them dealing with spell books it's like arrow types that require you know like slime of a frog I'm like, okay 
I so that's an interesting idea. Um, I I'd be curious because I so here's the thing. I'm not a player who enjoys managing free agent type shit. Like I don't play I don't play rogues because I don't want to deal with like managing poison poison poisons yeah. and shit. Um, but I feel it, there's got to there's there's people who do like that. I assume so. That would be. If if that's the case, that sounds like a good way to add more to the archer in that in that fashion. Enchanters don't use teeny daggers; they use charm. You don't need no teeny daggers for that. Well, what you really need, though, more than teeny daggers, are the the paradots or whatever for your rune spell so your charm your charm pet doesn't like murder you but like you just buy like 10 stacks of that shit and you go off for a month and you're good you don't have to really manage that unless you're really bad like i am um I don't know. Apparently you're not bad. You're a killer enchanter, apparently. Wasn't that the uh I think he's, last group, Nemino? I think he's just trying to get the service turned back on or something. Talking me up, so I'll I'll go turn the server on. <laughs> If Eminem came out today, which race class would be your main? Oh, man. It's hard to it's hard to say that now because I feel like there are certain things that there are certain mechanics that are we've talked about that sound really cool for certain classes that we're just not there yet for. Um I, I really like a lot of the tanks that we have. Like, Shadow Knight is always fun. The Warrior looks pretty cool, and some of the stuff that's going into him um, sounds like it's cool. I need to. I still need to try some some new stuff. Yeah, me too. Um, but you know, Enchanter is always like my my boy. Um, and there are certain there are certain things that. Nick's talked about, and even, like, it's in-game, actually. You guys have mess messed with the Enchant Ally. Um, I think that's a cool system that I want to see expanded upon more. Um, I think it has great potential to be really cool. So, I don't know. But it, it doesn't have a lot, like, right now, it's like, it feels like it's more of, like, a test. Testing out the system thing. It doesn't really do much. I'm not going to lie, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> I'm like thinking about where the hell this is in, on like the, the hand. I'm like, what did I just paint? Um, that, I the, think this is the knuckle. Yeah, it's the front knuckle, it looks like. Alright, well, we'll give it this instead of whatever the hell I gave is it. Is that the... Is it the top of it? Yeah, it's not fully. Really, yeah. Okay, that makes what it is. What does that look like? Oh, it did not update. Oh, wow. It's like everyone's talking about the survey being close to being done. So we are at 972 votes with 14 hours left on the survey. Oh, we'll get there. I'm I'm surprised we, <laughs> we're so close to it. I mean, we have like I, close to 10,000 people in the Discord though, so 1,000 votes should be doable. 
Yeah, that's what I think uh, is is uh, on Sean's mind recently. Actually, is yeah, sure we got all these people in the Discord, but how much of the, them are active? Um, and it makes me think of like the last time you know, or like like I have a lot of followers on Twitch, but all of it came from a fucking like almost like a like a very very distant past where nobody's they don't even know who i am <laughs> like they probably don't even frequent twitch anymore you know yeah yeah i keep getting a lot of like bot like just these bots think like liking me on um Instagram. It's just been a weird, like, influx of, you know, cam girl, OnlyFans, bots trying to get your attention. Dude, freaking on Twitter, I don't know what the hell's going on with Twitter recently. You go on any thread, like, like it's unrelated, and it's there's just like a, like a grocery store robbing or something, and then it's just like, in the comments or. Should have come to my grocery store, and then it's just like an OnlyFans. <laughs> it's just like fuck off. Have you, dude? Have you heard of um, dead internet theory? Yeah, yeah, dude. It's, I fucking watched. It, it's feeling a lot more like likely. that. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. That creeps me out. Not a lot of people understand community projects. They just join and wait for the, the release or big news. Yeah. I mean, I don't blame, I don't blame people yeah. for doing that. Like it, we're, we're a project that we're at least a year out from any meaningful, like thing. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's fine. I, I, I don't really follow other game projects as well like uh, i do the same shit so it's like i'm not even mad there's like a you know it goes both ways because you're like there's like people that are like i've been waiting for this for 10 years and you're like no you're not you haven't been fucking sitting there waiting for something for 10 years you've been living your life doing other things and every once in a while you'll check in but <laughs> you're not you haven't been waiting for 10 years um that's that's sort of my there's a there's a little bit of it but when you're like really involved or whatever but uh, i mean so define I don't, I don't define possum either. we're pretty close so maybe how many that's probably pretty cheap right maybe maybe one of these other bots will come in with the link to to get more bots and what we said <laughs> dude okay fucking i don't know if i there was this uh there was this competition um this art competition for fable legends i don't know if you guys remember fable legends it was this asymmetrical game um and i did this mask design and i thought it looked super rendered and but it was just, it just fucking sucked. The mask design was awful, to be completely honest. It was highly rendered, but it was an awful mask design. It was so awful. And someone else came up with a better design. And whoever wins gets into the beta. You know? And I was excited because I was like, I'm going to fucking win. But then I was getting crushed in the polls. You know? for Because it was like a voting thing on like Facebook. Or whatever and then i woke up like the day of and like my fucking thing just got like 200 more votes and i was like sick sure fucking why not and then i won and i was like looks like there was a surge and someone posted somewhere and no my friend fucking botted it for me <laughs> <laughs> without telling me and so i just thought like you know this was like years later um, and I was like, dude, thanks to him, I got to actually play 
play Fable Legends. Yeah, truly, what a bro. I didn't deserve it, but... Uh, Kalu... Kaludar. How did you guys learn to do art? Did you teach yourselves? I'll let you start, sir. Uh, well... A little bit of both. Um, I think... You know, art is a matter of observing and replicating what you see. So, to some extent, you're always going to teach yourself. But um, I think people kind of telling you better ways to replicate that stuff helps a lot. Um, I went to college for art, for 3D art specifically. Um, so... I was taught, taught, taught some stuff. I wouldn't say, you know, I think you and I both have issues with, um, art college. Um, yeah. what I learned there, I don't know. Uh, I felt like there was a lot of self self teaching, um, involved still, but I don't know, man. So it's, it's hard to say, but I think, I don't know. I, I've learned a lot from like tutorials and people t teaching me stuff and, but I like, you, you don't get anywhere if you don't apply any of that anyway, so you gotta, like, take that knowledge and practice, and that's that's kind of sort of self-teaching in a way as well, I guess. I don't know. That's a, that's a really shitty answer. <laughs> no, it's fucking right on point. Um, it's like, yeah, if, did you teach yourself? It's like, in essence, you're always gonna kind of teach yourself, you know, like, just because, you know, the, the, yeah. the art teacher can say fucking like, hey, do these things and then you do them or whatever. But it's up to you to like take those those like lessons and be like, OK, I need to apply them here and remember them and remember them here and, you know, like put in the effort, you know, so. Yeah, I don't think there's ever going to be a situation where someone just tells you how to do a thing and then you're just like an amazing artist all of a sudden. Yeah, th those sort of, like, what's it called? Those, that sort of, like, amazing artists, like, gains or whatever. I feel like those can happen when you take a look at, like, you know, your art philosophy or something. If, like, you change that up. But other than that, like, when you're talking about skill or whatever, or, or like, your technical ability, then, yeah, nobody's, nobody's going to teach you that sort of thing. Um... Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I did uh, I did university for a bit, and uh, to be honest, I'm I'm, I'm a fucking dropout because I never finished my fourth year. Cause holy shit, did it piss me off. Um, they're just a bunch of bunch of people that wanted to make mini versions of themselves and I was having none of that I wanted to paint goblins <laughs> and fantasy art though I do think that uh, what's it called we did a lot of like uh, like live uh life model sessions or whatever and a lot of those helped it helped you helped me really like learn to see and appreciate and gave me the time to to appreciate like drawing from life because i didn't really appreciate it but there is something quite special about drawing from life and uh like i think for the the couple years that i was in university it was like it kind of went through like a like a full blur where I just like snapped out of it and like three years had passed and I had, you know, I looked down on my sketchbook and I looked up and it was like, Jesus, look at all this time that's just like gone by because I spent so much time just head down in my sketchbook for like just drawing people on the bus in class and that sort of thing. So for your, for your like, um, figure drawing stuff, 
how what was your experience for that like did you was it just like they gave you the the space and the model and then you just did your thing or was there any actual like they they had some instruction there um so okay. like so like they you know they'd say hey uh this is going to be 30 seconds or whatever um i want you to focus on like uh the the points of tension you know or or whatever and you go okay well what the fuck does that mean or they go you know like i want you to uh block it in from bottom to top and then uh and, and so like you do i think one of the biggest ones was uh general to specific was through using vine charcoal a lot um and vine charcoal you can just like wipe off with your hand and so they make us do like a general to specific so you get something in in like 30 seconds and then we do another one and instead of like flipping the page we just wipe it off and there'd be like a like a shadow of where it used to be and it kind of gave you a little bit more like what's it called like a confidence in in what you needed to work on next because you could see like where you fucked up Mm -hmm. so there was there was some good i i think the the life drawing sections of university was some of the best university teaching that i've had and it informed a lot in how i how i think about like learning art and everything that sounds really um, good like yeah. I'm, I'm envious of that because we had you know it was it was a full digital school like a, it was like a focus on like, mm. well we had like a music program um and then like a digital 3d animation digital art game art thing so it wasn't like a fine art school but we still had like a figure drawing thing that was i think that you took like one class that was like mandatory or whatever but then they, mm. they did it on the weekends and that was entirely optional <laughs> but the problem was there was it was like it was like so optional that like you got no instruction it was just you show up and you do it yourself kind of shit. oh yeah, yeah. and like I don't know. I don't know how, like, like, kind of like, like some sort of fucking tip like that would, would have helped. Cause like, if you just go in there oh, and you don't yeah. really know what you're doing, you're just like trying your best to like copy what you see in the amount of time or something like that's not, I don't find that. It's not yeah, very there's, helpful. There's with, a lot, of, there's mm -hmm. a lot of really good, useful things that yeah. you can get out of, you know, like, um, in, in our first, in our first course, they had, uh, so this is like our introduction stuff. Um, the fundamentals of the first like two years were really good. Third year, eh, well, you know, and then where they gave a little bit more freedom, but really tried to steer you in like, I don't know, like specific ways. And then fourth year, I don't fucking know because I didn't do free. But um, in the first year, they did this thing that was super useful, which was they gave a, they like, okay, I ha we have these bunch of like sticks, right? There's like these little branches or something. Um, oh, hold on, Dragon just uh, just fucking subscribe for eleven months. Hey, Dragon, tier one, thank you for the sub. Um, so they gave us these sticks, right? And they were like flimsy, shitty brant tree branches, and we had this like really like really intense like ink. It was like a Japanese ink or something. I don't know if it doesn't matter that it was Japanese, but it was like really potent ink. Um, and we were told to stand like a meter away from our canvas and we dipped the tip of this branch, which was this flimsy ass branch. And we had to do, we had to paint like this, like, uh, I think it was like just a, just some fern or something. Like it was like a plant in the middle of the thing. And there was so much control that was just taken away from us, but the end product looked fucking sick. Because like, it was so weird, where like I was so used to just like scribbling, and like having so much control or drawing tiny, and then there was this polar opposite that they forced us to go through, which was like, hey, here's like what it's gonna look like, and the ink marks look fucking cool. And you could, and they, we walked around the class, and everybody's stuff like looked really cool. Um, and it was just like the mark of the ink and the confidence that people like were kind of forced to have because you only had one shot at like 
a leaf, you know, if you wanted to draw a leaf. Um, yeah, and so that was like a huge lesson. And I feel like that lesson, like, like helped me throughout my years because it was like the confidence of just drawing a line. Like I drew in pen for almost all of my like sketchbooks. And any time that I wanted to draw a line, it wouldn't be like a sketchy line. I would just go, okay, here's a line. Here's the bottom of the chin. And then, okay, uh, now I need to do the cheek and it would just be a single line. And I just do that for all of my drawings. And so all my work came out a whole lot more confident than, than uh, a lot of the previous years. And yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. There was some good stuff that came out of it. As much as I bash on the later years, there was some really, really strong stuff. Yeah, I think you'll always come or like any experience, you'll you'll come away with something of value. Mm. It's very easy to, to bash on art college. Okay, how does this guy look? Take out this these lines. It's very fun to bash on Archer College, and I'll always do it, but you know, deep down, we all know that there's there's something there. Still made us better in some way. Yeah. Oh, red. All right, I might have to uh, swap out and uh, just hand it all over to Zukin because I need to fucking eat something soon. I'll probably be heading out by 7. No, it's 6.45, 6.46 here. Might, might do the same, actually. I made some brownies yesterday, so I eat all of those. New here to watching the design process. What's next for the for the Drake, or what are you working on? Um, hey, you're you're in uh, you're in both channels, right? Your box. I guess I saw you in albums. Yeah, you're in both. Um, so the next thing on the on the list, I actually have a a to do list here. It show up you can see it um so i think um the rat man is next on the overall to-do list however i'm not actually going to be the one doing that one um we got a, a new guy that's joined the team recently doing character art stuff so i, I gave that one to him um and then zach is doing the tarantula right now so we have tarantula ratman in the process and then for myself i'm gonna finish up the drake i've still got a couple little bits and bobs i want to get done on him um and then there's a couple there's a number of like character sort of i guess backlog things that i need to get through like uh we're i'm still in the middle of upgrading or i guess refactoring the the cape situation so i'd like to get that sorted out and um we we're sort we're sort of like trying to do some final final things with our lerp setup so so i think oh just generally like i'm gonna do a lot of um i guess under the hood or or like administrative kind of nonsense um so so that's kind of my plan for probably this month um take a little bit of a vacation as well in there somewhere um but i think after that um i think the next thing on the list that 
I was gonna like the next new thing might be I'll pull up my list, my secret list. That you guys can't see. I think it might be. I don't know if I should say, man. I don't know if I'll do this one on stream. Actually, don't do it. I don't think. I think. I think it's. I think it's so cool that I don't want to show you guys until you see it. Vacation, where are you going? Uh, I'm going home and playing, like, just playing video game. I don't know. I just need a break. I'm not going anywhere. I just need to, I need to That's the best. Eat, eat brownies and play video games for a little bit. Staycation. That's, that's the best kind of fucking vacation, dude. I did that with well, fucking Dra Dragon's Dogma 2 launched. And that I did, I all I did was play that for a week. I didn't do any work, <laughs> nothing else. It was like, Jesus, lost myself. And it was great. Yeah, man, you need you need that every now and then. I think because it seems like you you and I both kind of like dive into stuff, so we we don't really take breaks at um, in moderation like normal people. Yeah, uh, weekends. <laughs> What are those? Um, Kaladar says, uh, how do you guys handle armor? Do you have to hand paint each armor set onto every race? Or do you make the armor and it's like an overlay? Um, we have a, a texture or a character texture atlas that we paint the armor onto. And then that armor propagates through all of our playable races and some non-player races that we pick and choose um this race is not one of them um this race is we did not do it on uh the player uv but it's because it's sort of a test case for a different type of of utilizing that where we're going to take like like the pants for example here and we're going to see if or this is the shirt all right, the shirt. I mean, uh, I thought that was the pants. And, uh, oh, hold on. And we're going to see how we can map this shirt, for example, onto the player races. Um, but after. So it's going to be sort of like a retrofit sort of a thing. But, yeah, we have all the, all the armors. Uh essentially applied to all of our player races and looks fucking sick the, the, the i don't know if the new guy mentioned his name or not but i'll just refer to him as the new guy for now um he's he actually showed me a, a feature in 3d coat that i didn't realize was in here but apparently you can you can bake a texture to a new a new model so what I might try to do, actually, now that you're talking about this, is when you're done with this guy and his, his armor, I'm going to see if I can just bake that. Maybe it won't work because the UVs are in a different spot, but I don't know. I might just try and see what happens and see if um, see if I can bake the straight up bake that texture onto the player model and see how it looks. That'd be cool. Yeah. Bake it right out to um Pedro. This this shirt ain't half bad, dude. I did a little bit of touching up on it, but it's fucking it's pretty cool. I think I'd like to see this on other on other players. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of really want to, to take whatever we give these guys and make it a thing. Cause I feel like have putting at least putting them on the smugglers. And then when they transform, it, they're still wearing the same thing. Like, that just makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Even even if we don't do it through lurping and all that shit, like... Um, so, yeah. I agree. That's cool. All right. I, 
I think I need to. I'm, I'm passing out here. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna call it as well um, then. We'll, we'll yeah. get food. So. Right, how do I? How am I gonna handle this? Turning. Oh, we need to find someone. We're gonna duo raid someone, dude. Oh shit. <laughs> this is cool. All right. Who are we gonna duo raid? Um, if you want to, and I know you don't have to, but if you want to, we can raid one of my friends, uh, Snob Goblin. That, or I think Primus MMOs also. I'm cool either way. Uh, Snob Goblin's playing the new Warhammer 40k, so if you guys are into that. Um, I need to find him first. All right. Well, you have to go. Flash raid. Snob goblin. All right, let me know. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, thank you all for joining. Hey, man. Thanks for the the dual stream and everything. It was fun. Yeah, dual stream is sick, dude. Where's my end button? There we go. This thing. Yeah, All right. Button. All right. Um, until next time, folks. Um, got a lot done today, and probably be back on Wednesday, finishing this guy up. I think I'm gonna try and finish the Drake up this week. Um, any last bits and all that stuff. Um, and yeah. Um, until then, have a good week. See you guys then. Eat some pizza and all that. Bye bye. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna raid here sooner, so then there's a little bit of a gap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead. I'll go right after you. Okay. Somebody shot Goblin works out. Ambushed by Paul and Lynch.